Hello and welcome to History Happened Everywhere. The Verdict. This is our after show podcast where we look back at our previous episode, Brazil. So if you haven't listened to that one, go back and have a listen or otherwise there will be spoilers ahead. Brazil. <laughs> 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 There's no way you're not going to look back on that and regret doing that noise. Nope. 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 Absolutely fine. I'm here in the studio with my colleague, co-host, co-presenter, and I'm pleased to say good friend, Ryan Weir. Hello, Peter. Hello, all. And down the line, of course, as ever, the erudite, the educated, the illuminating Paul Dursley. Good evening. Um, a question, uh, Paul. We obviously are here in our bikinis in tribute to the the episode that we had. I assume you got the memo and are currently uh, wearing your Brazilian cut bikini as well. Uh, no, but I was one. Wonder- I was wondering, do you have? Do you both have sort of shiny scrota at the moment? I have significant bruising. That's about the best <laughs> I can say about it. I did something very wrong and it came off very badly. Yeah. (laughs) There was blood, let's put it that way. (laughs) Whereas I have the smoothest thigh. Honestly, I keep touching it. It's just this little square (laughs) patch of very smooth, soft skin. Oh, so you you didn't you didn't finish the job then? No. Once the blood was coming, I I had a crisis of confidence (laughs) and to call it a day. (laughs) Yeah. I know how painful it is. I mean, you're going to have to expand on that. I thought you might uh, take that little one. Um, it was I was I was in the Middle East and sort of you go to the barber and they sort of say, "Oh, do you want the hairs out of your ears?" You know, like they do. Okay. So I just said yes, and so <laughs> they shoved a cotton bud full of wax into my ear and then pulled it out. It looked like a little hedgehog. So, uh, before we go on, uh, I believe it is traditional for is. one to do a one-minute summary, Mr. Ryan Weir. Would you care to remind us of what went on? I absolutely would. And we really need reminding on this occasion. Yeah. <laughs> More than most. <laughs> I had to go back and look at the notes, I'll be honest. <laughs> <laughs> All right, hit the button. Brazil is the fifth largest country in the world, covering nearly 50% of the whole of South America. Brazil was going through a lot of changes during the 1950s, but was experiencing an unprecedented era of optimism. Tourism was booming and European influences were being felt. Nowhere more so, in fact, than in the film industry, where outdated comedy musicals known as chanchada films were being challenged by students who, inspired by the French New Wave, wanted to reinvent cinema into something more intellectually and politically stimulating. At the same time, Rubim and Gilberto was collaborating on a new style of music which would go on to become become one of the world's most recognisable genres of music, bossa nova. After a humiliating defeat at the hands of neighbouring Uruguay, the Brazilian soccer team shirt is redesigned by a newspaper competition winner. His simple yellow jersey design was picked from over 400 entries and went on to be used by the World Cup winning squad in 1958, cementing the shirt as a fashion icon for decades to follow. We also talked about bikinis and how it migrated from France to Brazil via fashion models and Hollywood stars, then was adopted and morphed into an even smaller Brazilian bikini. We talked about how the revealing nature of the bikini accelerated a fashion for body hair removal with the introduction of the bikini wax. And we might have had a few cocktails and also Pete waxed his bikini line. Last week's episode done Summarised nicely Nice one son Now we're over to a young Dursley Who's gonna tell you what he thought of me He'll take you apart without any care He's the lovely Paul Dursley The lovely Paul Dursley That was very impressive Ryan Um, But you clearly did your homework Because towards the end I can't (laughs) I can't believe we were that clear on What was going on (laughs) Well, as a as as a listener, once I got over the self indulgent hour, um, <laughs> and I must admit, I forgot everything apart from the waxing. <laughs> oh, really? So it wasn't very memorable for you? No, the waxing sort of overtook everything. Uh, you can only remember the screaming at the end. That's probably not surprising. We should have thought of that. So let's start with the basics. Paul, have you ever been to Brazil? Uh, yes, it's funny enough, I've been there quite a few times. Oh, okay. Well, that's great. So are you an expert on Brazilian fashion in the 1950s to 60s? 
Why should I be? Oh, I've been to Brazil once, so I know everything about it. So tell us uh, about what's your what's your thoughts on Brazil? Uh, I like I like Brazil a lot. I wouldn't have gone there four and a half times if I hadn't. And a half time. <laughs> so you still there, out, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, one time I went to Argentina and just popped into Brazil. It was at Iguazu, which is somewhere I thoroughly recommend. Wait, There's a third there? country in Iguazu, though, isn't there? Not actually at the falls. Ah, true. It's very close to Paraguay. Uh, there is a triple point in the river, which you can see. But also there is uh, the Itapu Dam, which is shared between Brazil and Paraguay. So we should probably explain the Iguazu Falls before we go on. Yeah, because I have no clue what you're talking about. Oh, they're an absolutely stunning set of waterfalls. Much better than Victoria Falls. Uh, they're absolutely spectacular. It's, also, it's almost like two levels of falls. So you get a waterfall and then a half level where it flattens out again and then you get the bottom waterfall again and isn't the devil's throat or something like that mm. you will see them in a lot of movies because they're absolutely stunning and they are right on the border of argentina on one side and brazil on the other side did you ever see the film in the 80s called the mission i remember the film i don't remember seeing it though. <laughs> but there uh, yeah. The start of the, the film starts with someone being crucified and going over the falls i think lara goes lara croft goes there in one of her films as well Oh, I've seen that, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Right, okay, well, we're talking about waterfalls, but let's talk about the podcast. So when you listen to the podcast, did you find it took you back and you felt like you were back on one of your trips, perhaps the other half of that last trip you took? You were sort of regurgitating a lot of the obvious facts, weren't you? Um, But there is one thing I didn't know, which was about the film industry there. I didn't realise it had such a large film industry. I, I, it probably evolved into those awful telenovelas. I don't know whether you've ever seen any of those. Oh, I see what you mean. The, these soaps. Yeah, these weird soap operas that are just go on for hours and hours and hours. Yeah, they're just so weird. A, you can't understand what on earth they're on about. And B, one minute they're in the 18th century and the next second, next minute they're in the 21st century. <laughs> that sounds great. That sounds like a podcast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is just so weird and people take seem to take them to even intelligent people seem to take them so seriously but the brazil the last good brazilian film that i can think of was city of god that was a a, yes. sort of a very excellent movie wasn't it so they must be making other films i bet we're missing out So as you observed, there was cocktails happened, and uh, I happen to know for a fact that Ryan sent you, Paul Dursley, a selection of beverages. I don't know what he sent you exactly. So what have, what have you got uh, available for drinking tonight? Are you recreating the full experience? Well, I have tried some of them, but I, ha- I have to sort of be honest. When I say try, it's quite often one or two sips, and then down the sink for the next one. Almost universally, apart from the Capirinha, which I've had before, but I actually make my own way with no sugar or very little sugar in it. They are just so sweet. And I'm afraid I don't like any cocktails that leaves the corners of your mouth sticky. I found that the condensed milk with honey (laughs) and cinnamon (laughs) and cocoa. I deliberately didn't try any of those. And... The one with pineapple juice and rum was it the Bossa Nova? Yes. It looked like it looked like ditch water, but actually the taste was okay. It was too sweet, but the taste was okay. It had a taste, as unlike some of them. I think we can all agree the Caipirinha was king of that selection of cocktails. Absolutely, by a, by a long margin. Yeah. All right, so let's talk about football. Something that I never exactly. thought we would say. Uh, <laughs> I, I know nothing about it as well. I did. I did know the story about changing the strip. Yes. Right. And about the 1950s final. Have you ever seen uh, a football game? Yes. Okay. I saw a football game in Sao Paulo in Brazil where Flamenco were playing Rio de Janeiro team. It was sort of quite a quite a local derby. Wow. Okay. Did you, I mean, did you enjoy it? Was it fun? Why did you go to see a football game? Well, it's, a, it's, a, it's something you do and... I, I, I don't mind watching them occasionally. Uh, I can get bored quite quickly at a football match. I've seen as much football abroad as I have at home live. Mm. 
as I don't know, you just get like a, a different perspective on like the the culture and the people. My my father is a Millwall supporter, so for abroad people, Millwall is famous for its violent and angry fans. So I'd been to a couple of matches, and they were with Millwall matches in the UK. Uh, and then the next match I went to was in Belgrade, oh, which I right. thought Millwall was scary. <laughs> so right. I went to Belgrade. <laughs> where there were more police than I've ever seen in my life and uh, not a lot of away supporters, fortunately, I think. Mm. Uh, and there was like the bit we were in, which was kind of normal people, I guess. And then the bit behind the goal where all the ultras were chucking flares and <laughs> playing music. And it looked fun <laughs> from quite a distance away, but uh, I was... Uh, Why were they scared. throwing their trousers? Ah, ha, ha. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that was rather pathetic. <laughs> So uh, the Brazil shirt, though, do you like the look of it? Do you think it's iconic? Do you think it deserves its place in football history? Do you think they should change it? And how would you change it? <laughs> no, perhaps they should go back to the, what was it, white and... All white, yeah. Yeah, uh, perhaps they should go back to that. So the people I felt sorry for in that whole story was that they had a competition to mm-hmm. design a new shirt and there were hundreds of entries. Yeah. And then they went, here's the winner and it's a yellow shirt. Yeah. <laughs> there must have been these designers who've done chevrons and stars and lightning. They were. Oh, look at that. And then they've gone, plain yellow shirt, everybody. We have a winner. That's the winner. <laughs> isn't there a bit of blue on the shirt, though? Or their second shirt is blue as well, isn't it? <laughs> so, okay. Well, no, that's an interesting thing. Because in the 1954 World Cup, uh, Brazil gets through to, I think it's the final with Sweden, in Sweden. So Sweden's playing at home and they wear a yellow kit. So, well, a yellow shirt. Um, so Brazil weren't allowed to wear their new yellow shirt that older Schlee had designed. It's literally their big outing. And so they had to go and get a second kit. They didn't have a second kit to play. So they went out into Stockholm and the only shirts they could find was just in a regular store and they were all blue. So from then on, their second kit is a blue shirt. I'd have loved it if they'd okay. have come in and like just button up Hawaiian cards. Well, yeah, it could have been anything, couldn't it? <laughs> Dungarees. <laughs> well done when we were did at school and just they had to not take skins. their shirt off. Yeah, skins. <laughs> So, um, do you, I mean, would you wear a, a football shirt, though? I see no need to, so the answer is no. Do you, Why but do you think would... that people should wear them, like, f- fashion-wise, people wear football shirts? But if, uh, if people want to wear them, they can. I think universally they look stupid in, in any setting that's not a football stadium. And they're, they're also, I'm, fr- I'm afraid, they're just falling prey to the commercialism that that is there. Do you know many Brazilian footballers? Uh, personally? <laughs> yeah, personally. I would and also love it if you, you turn name? around and said, yeah, Neymar's around on Saturday, actually. <laughs> Get you quoting Neymar. You told me about him. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, is it Edison de Nascimento? Go on. Well, you know, that, you know who that is. No. Well, it's Pelé. Oh, is that his real name? It's something like that. Oh, very cool. That's a good fact. I did not know. He's still. I think he's still alive, isn't he? I think so. He's, a, he's an ambassador, yeah. Still hawking Viagra, I think. I was going to say that. Well. Beg your pardon. <laughs> That's he. He's famously got a contract selling um, Viagra. Uh, oh, I didn't know not that. Not selling it himself, but like advertising. He's got a stall outside uh, Rio <laughs> Station. <laughs> he's the he's the spokesperson for Viagra. So he's very good at keepy up, is he? <laughs> hey. <laughs> Sorry, about <laughs> that's that. Crazy. That was good. Peter Flair's jokes, hands down. <laughs> Well, have you been to Copacabana? Yeah. Have you been to Copacabana Palace? Um, I've not been to the Copacabana Palace. I've been past it a couple of times. Copacabana is sort of the worst of the three beaches there. Oh, is that right? Yes. Yeah, it's only lovely. It's only lovely, <laughs> yeah. Well, they get better as you get away from the city. So you get Copacabana. But there's something like 30 beaches in the city. Copacabana then turns into Ipanema, which then segues into Leblon, which is one that nobody ever remembers. And Leblon is the smart one. No, no one talks about Leblon. Uh, Leblon was the one I used to hang out on. 
Oh, was it? Yeah, I was visiting friends who were living and working in Rio, Mm -hmm. and Leblon was the nearest beach to them. So I guess they must have been in the swanky part of town. Hmm. When you went, did you wear Speedos? Uh, No, I wore long board shorts (laughs) and usually linen trousers and something to cover almost the entirety of my very non-Brazilian body up for the sake of everybody. (laughs) I did briefly wonder, because I thought, everyone says these guys are really attractive, but they're all right, but they're better than me, but not all that. And then one day I thought, well, I need to do some exercise. So I went to the gym mm-hmm. uh, and I went to the gym and I went, oh, this is where they all are. I felt like I'd gone to a model's convention right. at the gym. <laughs> and there I was sweating and trying to row and looking around all these absolute gods and goddesses. Uh, and uh, I left and never went back. Yeah. <laughs> they were wondering what you were doing. Like, What's that guy doing? Why is he sweating so much? <laughs> He's a funny colour, that guy. Looking nervous. <laughs> Honestly, it was uh, <laughs> quite intimidating. Well, th- those long stretches of beaches, because they all sort of, one turns into the other, although there's a fort between Copacabana and Ipanema. But every sort of couple of hundred yards or couple of hundred metres, there's a kiosk. Every couple of hundred yards. So it's kiosk after kiosk after kiosk. You know, sometimes they're doing ice creams or hot dogs or raw coconuts. And that, that's quite nice. You sort of, and they each have a number which sort of tells you where you are on the, where you are on the beach. And do they have, although I never really went on the beach, I just walked along the prom. In your speedos. <laughs> Uh, no. <laughs> so funny thing when I was there was that um, men wouldn't sit on the beach. So if you went, all of the men mm-hmm. were standing up and all of the women would sit on the beach, but men wouldn't sit down on the beach. Wh- wh- why? I've no idea. It was just a thing. No one, no men sit on men the beach? Men wouldn't sit. They'd all stand on the beach and the women would sit down. Okay. I don't know if that's a thing that I've just, just was a weird thing of that moment or was a genuine Brazilian thing. So Brazilians, explain, please. Yeah, let us know if there's, if that's a thing or if Pete's just imagined the fact that... It's just been a weird moment stands. where everyone stood up and I was like, oh, this is weird. Because <laughs> you'd notice, right, if that happened. <laughs> I guess you'd notice. One of the things that I found really quite amazing was at night, though, you walk along and... The beach is basically floodlit like a football stadium. So the sand is still bright white because basically there's people playing football and handball all the way along the beach. And that, uh, that's something I was not expecting. Sort of at night, the whole, the whole thing sort of comes alive with sort of people playing football. It just never, it never stops. On the sa- yeah, on the, on the sand. And it's a sort of, you walk along the, you walk along the prom and big spotlights all the way along and the whole beach is illuminated. That's so cool. And, uh, you, you, you know, the, the setting, you, the setting of Rio, I think, has to be the best setting of a city in the world. Why is that? Well, you've got the mountains, you've got the beaches, you've even got a big lake. Largo um, in the middle of it and the city is sort of dotted around between lots of mountains so you get tunnels that link different bits of the city together wow no idea and okay I only saw the nice bits of Rio there are some very nasty bits are there I think there was some there was something on the news today about 29 people being shot in a favela. Oh my goodness. So the, the when you go to Rio, correct me if I'm wrong here Paul, but so basically there was a city ordinance was that you couldn't build on the nice hills around. The idea was to preserve the nice hills around. Hmm. So what actually happened was all the favelas got built on the nice hills around because they didn't care about the laws. So all of the slums essentially are on this on the hills overlooking the city oh. rather than being in the inner city which is what we're used to I guess in more common city structures. But yeah, the favelas are on the outskirts that going all the way up the hill. But yeah, I was going to say they are on the outskirts. Uh, the, one of the weird things about Rio though is it's quite mountainous in the city centre, the different bits of the city centre. Yeah, you know, you've got this bloody great Corcovado Christ statue on top of a mountain in the middle of the city. I, so you've both mentioned flavelas, but I, you haven't explained what those are. It's a Brazilian South American shanty town. It's specifically Brazilian, actually, a favela. But they're absolutely enormous. Okay, well, I feel like we're coming to a point where we're going to have to get a grading. Uh, Well, so you're just skipping over bikinis completely. No, I mean, we can talk (laughs) about bikinis if you want. (laughs) I just want to know Paul's position on the bikini. What do you want to know about 
I'm, I'm, they, I, I did remember when you were saying it, Pete, that they were designed by engineers. And you sort of, what sort of engineer, as you say, gets four triangles and sticks them together? It's, it felt slightly disappointing. They could, I feel like they could have done more, engineeringly speaking, because... As Ryan pointed out, there's been bikinis for several hundred years. Then two engineers, not just one engineer, two mm. engineers go, let's invent that again. Yeah. <laughs> and somehow it works. I think that's the thing that blows my mind most. Not that two engineers made this thing, but that nobody went, they've been around for ages, mate. <laughs> I feel like it's possible that it was just one guy and the other one just reviewed it. And I went, yeah, that looks good. And he's like... <laughs> <laughs> I th- I think that I think it's the name as you know it's been around the name bikini it's it's sort of quite a bikini bikini it's a sort of quite a I don't know what the word is it's certainly not onomatopoeic but it's sort of it is redolent of the object bikinis according to Pete you were trying to go down the line of that there were two breasts and, and that's what bikinis. I was t- no I thought it was two parts right because you'd had single parts swimsuits and then it was a two part swimsuit that's what I sort uh-huh. of assumed that was the origin of it. And uh, I was completely wrong. Un- unikini. An unikini, exactly. <laughs> talking, t- talking about that then, are you, are you sort of all clean enough to wear a mankini then, Pete? I should have got you a mankini, shouldn't I? No, you should not. I was very delighted that you got me a Brazil <laughs> shirt, which is lovely, by the way. Yeah. Um, no, I I don't think I'm fit to be seen uh, even in a trikini at this point. <laughs> 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 Try kitty. What would be the third? I'm thing not that's sure. I'm up? curious myself as to what I've just invented there. <laughs> Answers on a postcard. I don't feel like you can have just invented that by yourself. I feel like I need to chip in. Yeah, we need two uh, two podcasters <laughs> to invent the trikini. <laughs> I, I, th- I think you need a band like a cummerbund around the waist as well. A cummerbund. <laughs> of course you do. <laughs> and, and a little bow tie. I was thinking a hat of some kind, but let's go with the cummerbund. <laughs> the trikini. <laughs> Well, look, I think, unless Pete, you've got anything else that you want to ask Mr. Dursley? No, I'm satisfied now we've covered the bikini area. (laughs) I'm glad it's covered. (laughs) (laughs) So, Paul, have you got any questions for me or for Pete? Was it itchy? No, not at all. Uh, No, not yet. The hairs are growing back. So check back in a week's time, maybe. It was sore. Really sore. (laughs) It was really sore. Really sore. Mine's been fine. I'll be honest. (laughs) I've had no problems. I might do it again. Technique is everything. I was sort of thinking, as you were going through it, I was sort of thinking, the prize isn't going to be something like that, is it? And I must admit, I thought the prize would have been, you'd have got like a professional in or, you know, sent Pete to a, 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 whatever they call it, a money laundering salon that does waxing, (laughs) you know, that sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah, no, I did consider getting uh, somebody in to actually do a professional waxing because I was worried about me doing hot wax. Then I discovered cold wax strips, which were claimed to be easily uh, applied and removed as long as you followed the instructions, Peter. You wouldn't end up getting bloody and bruised. (laughs) So now I figured that I could just do it myself also the thought of bringing somebody in and them sitting waiting in the room with us <laughs> while we got drunk talking about this <laughs> Pete not knowing who they were so who's uh, who's your friend Ryan forget about them they're, they're not they're, important they're not important <laughs> Yeah. And then if yes, I'd have rolled I, all I, the right numbers, you'd went, uh, you've got to go home now. <laughs> that, was, that was it the whole I, night. I did look it up on the internet and it was what you can't, you can't unforget some of those things. Have you watched some, have you, on the internet now? Fortunately, the ones that I looked at weren't explicit. So okay. it was camera angles were well chosen. See, one of the best things about doing this podcast is you find yourself Googling things like that. And then, of course, the uh, your search history is forevermore going, do you fancy another of those waxes that you enjoyed so much? <laughs> <laughs> Stop advertising waxing to me. <laughs> so, Pete, I've got a question for you. Go for it. Did you have any suspicions about the prize? I hadn't really thought about it. I was very focused on rolling all the numbers. Yeah. But that's because, you know, you give me a task and I want to do that task. Mm-hmm. Right? The insult to injury where we rolled the six right after we that just failed the game was, um, I mean, you couldn't write that stuff really, could you? Uh, no, I mean, you, you literally got all of them. One roll too one late. One roll too late. That was amazing. <laughs> it would have really ruined I, my I plans. Was, I was thinking, he's not, is he? He's not, is he? It was so close. 
I, I honestly, I was uh, nervous. Well, no, I was, I was, I was sort of to, you know, coming to the punchline. I was sort of thinking, it's not going to do that. I said, they're not going to do that. And then they did. Yeah, you did. Yeah, we did. did do it. Yeah, we did. How and commitment to your was... entertainment. <laughs> Well, I don't, I don't know whether it was entertainment. Um, I, I don't know what other people thought. Perhaps this is because I know you. Perhaps people who don't know. I was actually quite disturbed. Oh, were you worried for us? No, I wasn't worried. I was Have we found horrified? a caring Dursley? <laughs> I was sort of disturbed for you. <laughs> yeah, no, fair enough. Paul, what's my grade? Oh, you want an overall grade? Do well, you? I just feel like we should just get this done, get it over with, because like I, I don't feel like this is going to be a very good one. C plus. C plus. There you go. That's actually better than I thought. It, it, it was only that because and semi semi serious. It was a bit self indulgent because we forget kept forgetting <laughs> what we were talking about towards the end. <laughs> but yeah. no, knowing knowing you two as I do, it was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it was. Um, yeah, and and it had that sort of inevitable. It was going toward that inevitable conclusion. <laughs> well, a C plus, I will take it gladly with arms open. I thought that was going to be a D easily. <laughs> <laughs> so, thank you, Paul. My pleasure. Uh, what can I do to work on to improve for next time? Send me some better drinks. <laughs> okay, <laughs> fair point. <laughs> Talking of next time, Peter, remind us what it is. It is Singapore in the Persian Empire period, which is about 3000 to about, I think it was 300 BC, uh, on the topic of discovery, in which I discover that something happened. Surely, oh God, surely something happened. <laughs> Sounds like you're really struggling with this one. A little bit, but there is time yet. We will pull this out of the proverbial bag. Singapore sling, are you going to get pissed again? <laughs> oh, I have to. <laughs> the current rate. <laughs> If time travel is invoked, I can assure you it'll be at least a D minus. Pop a, pop a D in now, <laughs> just to <laughs> save us some time later. All right, so I think that's probably our show for this week, isn't it? Yep, I think so. All right, thank you so much for listening. As ever, if you'd like to get in touch about anything we found, anything we've talked about, you know how to do it. Come to hhepodcast at gmail.com. Uh, and you never know, you might end up featured on a future show. So one way to definitely feature on a future episode is to rate and review the show on Apple Podcasts. Uh, basically, it helps us and helps others sort of discover the show and appreciate what a fine, upstanding, glorious podcast body of work is. that we have. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and make sure to subscribe to Instagram and TikTok and Twitter and LinkedIn, wherever your social media lies, um, and you'll get some additional history happened everywhere there. So anyway, we'll be back next week with a new place, time and topic, as you know. And if that's not enough, we have a growing archive of old shows. This was episode 27. There's 26 other shows. If you've not listened to those, go back and have a listen. Um, and you can access those via our website, which is hhepodcast.com. Uh, they're also available on YouTube or through your podcast provider. Paul, Mr. Dursley, Master Dursley, Sir Dursley. Thank you very much for joining us. Oh, it has been my absolute pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> so all that's left to say is... You've been listening to... History Happened Everywhere. The Verdict. Have you voted? Yes, I have. Did you vote for Count Binface? Yes, I did. 
thought you might. If I voted for Count Bimface and then he got in and then they still didn't improve the frequency of my rubbish collection, I would be very disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid I don't even know who Count Bimface is. Well, you'd recognise him, I'm sure. <laughs> I mean, he literally has one very on distinguishing head. feature. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> History happened everywhere. Movie review. Hello and uh, welcome to History Happened Everywhere movie review. Um, this is the first we've done at these, so we'll see how it goes. In our last episode of The Verdict, uh, we talked to Paul Dursley about ghosts in the USA during the late 1980s. And uh, Pete and I both agreed that one of the spookiest ghost stories that we'd seen was in a movie called The Ring. Now, Paul said that uh, he hadn't seen it, so we set him the challenge to uh, go and watch it and then report back. So, Paul, we're going to talk through your thoughts and feelings on the film in a moment. Mm. If you haven't seen it, by the way, uh, you may want to jump off in case there are spoilers. I wouldn't bother. So the film started as a novel by Koji Suzuki, who is essentially considered the Japanese Stephen King. Um, it inspired the film director Hideo Nakata to make a horror film called Ring, which has been described by um, the press as giving chills that burrow all the way into your bone marrow. Spooky film. Uh, it was hugely successful, and it's said in part to have started uh, what is known as the J-horror genre, uh, the Japanese horror film. It was a boom which started all the way through the 90s, and in some ways is still going to today. It includes films like Cairo, uh, Audition, Dark Water, The Grudge. All of which I haven't seen. And that's fine. So this film, Ring, centers on the cursed videotape. This particular videotape in the story is told that it will bring certain death to anyone who watches it in the next seven days. And uh, because of the success of that film, Hollywood came calling. They created The Ring, uh, which is directed by Gore Verbinski. It stars Naomi Watts, who is a journalist who is investigating the mysterious videotape, which causes the death of anyone who watches it seven days later. But she and her small son watch the tape and it becomes a race against time to find out why the tape is killing everyone and how it can be stopped if at all the film goes on to gross around about 250 million dollars um and spawn several sequels paul what did you think of the ring well 250 million dollars and three pounds 50 pence to rent the thing um <laughs> was there a I would say it's a rather expensive price to pay. <laughs> so, uh, okay, but I mean, was there any element of enjoyment that you had? Well, I watched it in two bits because I did get bored with it uh, about three quarters of an hour through. But I guess that's part of its 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 mystery, right? Part of its suspense is the slow build up. Yeah, but th but then there, where was the horror in it? I just didn't get any. Okay, so, well, let's talk about the horror. Again, spoilers, if you've not seen The Ring and you do want to go and see it, there are going to be spoilers ahead, so bear that in mind. There is a ghost in this film. Um, it is based on a type of Japanese ghost called the Onryo. Okay, I didn't know that. Which uh, manifests after dying in the grip of powerful rage and returns as a very pale and physical ghost to seek vengeance on the living. So it's got its roots in some sort of legend and myth. Okay. Um, it's, it's sort of quite difficult to review something that, well, I had no interest in before. And after after watching it, yeah. sort of have even less interest in it, really. Um, <laughs> it hasn't inspired you to get into go and watch The Grudge or Dark Water or any of these other Japanese horror films? Uh, no, but but I don't, I don't get it. If you thought that was the most suspenseful and horrific film that you've ever seen, uh, you can't have seen many horrific films. So you've seen other films that were more scary? Well, The Shining was more scary to me, but I saw it as a child. Shining is, is up there, isn't it? It's, it's considered to be one of the more scarier films. 
Uh, what do you think of the plot device of using a VHS? Well, I, I, I'll answer that slightly wider. It was just so old-fashioned, wasn't it? The whole film was mm. so old-fashioned with a videotape and those large flip mobile phones and actually use, <laughs> actually using sort of house phones as well and, and cathode ray tube televisions. Yeah, that's that's true. I, know, I looked, it was 2002, wasn't it? So 2002 wasn't it was released, long, yeah. That long ago. Uh, how much things seems to have changed since then no does that give it an air of mystery more the fact that it's kind of out of our time zone or or does that make it less scary because it's it's harder to relate to i think it makes it less because well in my brain i'm thinking about oh look it's a video recorder i haven't seen one of those for a while and God, uh, you know, a cathode ray tube television and, yeah. you know, unable to contact people instantaneously. Um, I, I think it would be better if it was like 50 or 60 years ago, you know, totally um, in the past. Right. I mean, as a, as a device, though, it, at that time, if you were to rent the ring you could you could easily see yourself being substituted into the film in in that way right oh 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 yes i i i was i was when i was watching the film i did think it would be funny if my mobile were to ring just after i finished watching it <laughs> yeah of course because that's how it works right it, so that you watch the film it didn't and then the phone rings twice and a voice tells you that you're going to die in seven days is that right Yes, that's correct. Which is why I told you when I wasn't didn't tell you when I was watching it. Yeah, I should have just called you on it every hour <laughs> <laughs> over the past week. <laughs> Let's say it's true. How long have you got? How many days left? Um, I I started it on Friday and finished it on Saturday. Okay, because I said I said I got a bit bored with it. I wonder if that counts. Uh-huh, exactly. Well, I didn't duplicate <laughs> it, did I? Also, do you have to watch the entire film all the way to the end, or can you just watch a bit of it? And that's sufficient. Well, they never made that. They never made that clear, did they? No. Okay, so let's talk about uh, Naomi Watts. Was she a compelling actress? Did she present to you a real-life fleshed-out character with motivation? Not really. And there was a lot of, um, you know, young womanish, um, <laughs> sort of behaviour. <laughs> How do you mean whoa, 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 behavior? Well, well, she was acting uh, weak. Is that what you're well, saying? There, there, was, there was quite a lot of cliche and thing, wasn't there, really? But do you think that there is something about having a vulnerable woman in the role of in, in a horror film that that in, intensifies the, uh, the, the, the element of fear, the suspense? Um, it's a bit of a cliche, but I just didn't like the cat. I didn't like her character. I didn't like the male lead character. They just didn't come across as normal people. So you didn't care what happened to them? No, exactly. I wanted to, I wanted her to die. You did? <laughs> and that, that ugly child as well. <laughs> there are a couple of famous sequences. Um, firstly, uh, the, the, the now classic image of the ghost crawling through the TV screen. Now that... That's been done before, hasn't it? I can't remember the film. What is the film? And I'm not even sure I've seen the whole film. Well, probably the original Ring. No, 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 no. no, no. (laughs) I I don't know what the film was, but it was, oh, a long while ago, like the 70s, where when when American television shut down at the end of the day with the National Anthem. And I can remember it was a television playing the US National Anthem. And as it finished, it sort of, went to white noise on the screen and then a hand yeah. came out of the screen are you talking about poltergeist by the way the film poltergeist because that has a sequence in it where a child is sucked into the tv they're here it may be um anyway it, it could well be but as an image though right uh, just that of the 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 young girl with her hair wet hair down in front of her face crawling towards you late at night the dark of the room there's something quite um, quite gripping about uh, about that that image isn't there i'm sorry but i don't i don't think something coming out of the screen is that much of a of a of a new idea it's a you know every, every child when they look at a television as a, well, yeah. especially the old CRT where the TV was a box 
we think, so where are the people in there? Are they going to come out? So I suppose then what it's doing is it's playing upon that fear. Uh, like, like you say, there are you know the, 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 very few original things in life, but um, it, 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 it has become somewhat of a, a classic image. The idea of you being stalked in your own home, in the privacy of your uh, your own living room, where you feel safe watching your TV, to have some malevolent spirit crawl through the TV into your room and invade your space and attack you, that's kind of kind of horrifying. Okay, the first the first half of that exists now, doesn't it? The second half obviously doesn't and will never uh, exist. <laughs> yes, that's true. Yeah, that's you true. know, there isn't, is that, the, isn't that the point though? Isn't it triggering those latent Stone Age fears? What the Stone Age fears of your television? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Of being stalked, being haunted. <laughs> the Fred Flintstone television. Gore Verbinski, did he do a good job? Well, it's not for me to say because it's it's, it's difficult. Well, did to, it work? Uh, did did it work? Was there any element of fear in you at all when you watched this film or did you completely watch it impassively? Well, uh, p- perhaps I deliberately watched it impassively. I don't know. Um, I'm, I'm tempted to say that perhaps it hasn't aged well, but there's a part of me that, that remembers how terrified I was. Ah, oh, I think, uh, you, I think you've hit it. it. It's how old were you when you saw it? Yes. Yeah, I was pretty young. Not quite a fetus, but... Anyway, right. Let's, uh, let's get to a grading then. A grading D minus. D minus. Not even a hesitation there. How could it? How could it have improved? Like, what would it take to frighten you? Well, the, the, yeah, the, okay. The cards on the table is there are two answers to that. Of course, there is the scientific answer, which is, of course, it is all a load of tosh. And then there's the other side of that <laughs> when you know, if someone said, "Do you want to come to this so-called haunted house uh, and test it for me and sleep over or whatever?" I wouldn't do it because probably they it'd be a you know, it 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 it'd all be an utter con anyway. Uh, you know, I, I don't I don't particularly like it. You know, a lot of people like a cheap thrill. <laughs> they do. <laughs> I like a cheap thrill. Right. On that note, we're going to leave it there. Thank you very much for listening to our history happened everywhere movie review of The Ring. Paul Dursley, you gave The Ring a D minus. Hopefully, our next film that you review will do better. Thank you, Paul. Thank you very very much. 